Hello there, welcome to another episode of World of Tanks at Ungainy Titan. We're here on Prokhorovka in counter mode, and it is very much a tier 6 battle. We're on the T-3485 Rudy, the tier 6 Soviet premium tank, um, and we have the Rudy crew on it, the original Rudy crew, complete with the dog. Pretty good matchmaking for the T-3485, um... There's no tank there that would give me trouble in terms of penetrating it. Obviously there's quite a few tanks out there that would have no trouble penetrating the armour in the T-3485. The principal thing of the armour in the T-3485 is that it's very well, very well sloped. So you bounce shots because of your mobility and the sloping of the armour rather than because of the actual strength of the armour. Um, there are a lot of tanks out there with stronger armour. But the T-3485 is a pretty decent tank, and I'm happy enough, um, particularly in counter mode, to be reasonably aggressive on the ridge line with it, especially when I'm top tier like this, because there's nothing that will just simply obliterate me on top of the hill here when I come up. To have a look around, you know, the thing about having a look around up here is you, as soon as you're spotted, you don't hang around uh, messing. You're trying to get a gauge so that your team can set up um, as well as possible. Now there's an 820 coming very aggressively across the top. I never really understand why people keep doing this with light tanks. Now I thought it was me that got the tracking shot in there, but I don't think I did. Because I haven't got any kind of critical hit uh, ribbon, nor have I got any tracking assist damage ribbons. So somebody else must have tracked them. However, we still did got a couple of assistance uh, damage ribbons for just spotting him. Now, we have a couple of more tanks coming over here, and there's another uh, Panzer T-25 um, becoming very aggressive and heading right towards one of our tanks. He's uh, bullying the Stuart now. Yeah, the Panzer T-25 is much uh, superior tank to the Stuart. I think the two mediums behind are possibly a little too far back. Um, they're not putting effective fire into the T25 anyway. Which they should be uh, if they were in a position to support the Stuart. Uh, so I'm coming in here, make a run in, put a round into the back of the Panzer T25, use the buildings for cover and just get out of there. Um, I'm not trying to hold that position or take out any more tanks. I can do them later on, thank you very much. Now, I've been spotted by the lead crossing the road again, or possibly by one of the guys in the centre. I'm not sure. Bounce the shot there. Now we get back into the centre position again, where we just lost a heavy tank. Um, I always think that poking the ridge line is not the priority when you're playing the centre, especially if you're alone. Um, more important thing to do is patrol the bottom of the ridge line and spot the guys trying to cross it from the enemy side and let the guys behind you do the killing, at least early on. Because otherwise you just uh, losing your hit points no good effect. Because the stuff that you light up beyond the ridge line is generally inaccessible to anybody but artillery. And aggressive poking on the ridge line, in my opinion, really only benefits your team if you've got lots of artillery. Um, especially nowadays because they've restructured Prokhorovka, so the back of the maps aren't as tall and they don't have a clear field of fire down the whole length of the map the way they did when it originally came out. So I'm going to go into the bowl I think uh, around about the time but it's good. This is a great spot actually for scouting as well. Um, take a shot there at the BDR G1B. It is, if you get the flat sides of the armour, actually an easy enough tank to take out. It is pretty strongly armoured for its tier and it has a very good, very powerful, hard-hitting gun. But it's got a slow reload and a um, not great gun handling. I think the accuracy is pretty good, but it's got a long aim time, if I remember correctly. Now, I did get shot by other tanks as well at the back, behind it. Including that VK-3001. And there's a Largo. Swedish, I think. Um, tier 4, putting rounds into the side of me there. Those Swedish tanks are pretty decent guns as well, so he's managed to put one to the front of me as well. That was a hit I could have done without taking, um, that's the way it goes, but I take him out. Which again clears out some more of the enemy tanks, and we're a tank down, the infantry is now pushing forward aggressively. Now, 
I'm not sure about the wisdom of this run. I made this run. I got away with it. I took out the M3D. Uh, it was another gun out of the game, but I took another hit doing it. And uh, I'm not sure if I could have afforded that or if it was a good idea at the time. Maybe I'd have been better off staying in the ridge line and just taking out the M3D from there. Very lucky shot on the looks. Uh, did manage to take him out, and was quite fortunate not to have a direct hit by the artillery there. Just the loss of the tracks alone was enough. Uh, we managed just to repair the tracks and we get back out of there. We are no longer spotted. I think we just pull back further um, to try and minimise our chances of being seen. That VK3001 has to go, and uh, a bit of support here from the medium tank. It's a Panzer 54, I think. So I'm going to try and spot the um, the VK3001, and hopefully we can take him out. So I'm going to start with this bush, um, get into the bush, wait for the binoculars to kick off. It'll extend my view range a bit, and we do spot him. So he's in the open, we get a tracky shot in, and uh, we should be able to put a few rounds into him while he repairs these tracks. It doesn't look like he's needed repair, so he hasn't, probably hasn't got a repair kit. He's gone invisible, so he's at the edge of our view range, so when he's sitting still, even firing the gun, he's not being spotted. So it's just the movement that was causing him to become spotted. We've got another couple of rounds in, that one falls short, and it's a tracking shot. Um, Probably it tracks that one falls short as well as a complete miss. So I'm just taking a guess here based on his um, gun tracer, but I don't hit. So I think I'm right. I'm going to push forward a bit, go into the next line of bushes, and see if I can spot him um, directly. Again, I do have the medium tank behind me. I'm not sure how much support he can give me. He could do with being a little bit more aggressive. I think. Uh, the rest of our team are on the other side, engaged at enemy tanks coming off the hill, and um, we're down two tanks. Things aren't looking too good. Now we spot the VK3001H, and I managed to put another round into him and hold him in position, and now we finish him off. And while that's happening, we've lost another tank. And we've just got the artillery left, and we're now down to the artillery, and there is uh, one more enemy tank, uh, enough four enemy tanks, the two of us. Now I thought initially, I th and I still think we'd have been better off going this way. I, I reckon up at this end of the map there is nobody up there except the um, the artillery probably, and he's probably not even up here anyway. Um, that heavy tank down near our spawn point doesn't really matter however the medium tanks heading south so I thought I'd better support my ally my teammate uh, it's more useful to have two guns together where we can at least provide mutual support than to have us uh, separated I was also hoping he'd do a little bit of the heavy lifting as well because you know I've only got uh, what 29 hit points um, so I park myself in a bush, wait for the binoculars to kick off and see if I can catch that heavy tank crossing the back line of the map. But it doesn't look like he's done so. And I don't spot him. The medium is heading east and he's not spotting anything either or picking anything up. So we go low and try and get into these bushes there at a little bit further, um, further on so we can see that a little bit further into the enemy, or to the last known location of the enemy tanks, and I'm coming up here by the bushes, six cents hasn't gone off, I haven't been spotted, park in the bush and see, wait for the binoculars to come up, see if I can see anything, again I'm more forward positioned than the, uh, the medium tank that I'm dependent on, and I don't see anything, now, So I don't think that enemy tank pushed into the field at all, I think he uh, came down to the railway, didn't see anybody around and then probably went, maybe went back in the direction of the cap circle or maybe he's still below there, it's very hard to say. Um, what's left, it uh, was a heavy tank so it's probably the T-150, he could be anywhere, um, if you, I was in a T-150, 
I wouldn't drive too far from the cap circle. Somebody's just gone into the cap circle. The other enemy medium tank is a Matilda and another tank that I wouldn't drive too far from the cap circle in because they're just so slow um, if you went too far away. The two of us could quite easily cap before the game before they could get back uh, on the map's biggest proper off grid. Now Sixth Sense just went off there. Spotted the medium tank, so that's the Matilda. Definitely don't want to get shot by that. He will have no trouble penetrating any part of my tank, except maybe the gun mountain. And even then I wouldn't bet on it. It's a very good gun on the Matilda and very rapid firing and he's doing more than enough hit points to have one shot for him. But I was hoping that the medium would put a round into the Matilda but he didn't do so and he's gone over towards the edge of the map so he's not now in a position to shoot the Matilda. Um, so I thought okay we better go over there and join him and see if he can get onto because if we can get onto the ridge line, if I can get onto the ridge line um, I could probably spot things for the um, Panzer 54. So I come over here, I crest the railway line. Now I know somebody spotted him there and was shooting at him, uh, but I crest the railway line and nobody. I see nobody. And more to the point, nobody sees me. Now I didn't spot him firing at that position, which is a bit of a pity. Because if I had spotted that when I was playing, uh, I might have done this. Um, but I, when I came off the ridge line, I thought if there was a tank there, I would have seen it. But I didn't see the Marder 38T, and uh, obviously he didn't see me either, because the Marder 38T doesn't have a great view range. So that was the end of me. Uh, the chance of going onto the ridge line of the hill just didn't work out. It was the wrong play, and this is just completely wrong play. He's now. Tracked and he's under fire from three separate tanks. Uh, there's a Matilda, there is a T-150, every one of them which can penetrate him and take him out. So it's game over. So that is it. A little bit disappointing towards the end. Uh, things didn't work out the way uh, we would have liked. So how do we finish up? Well, we did almost 2,000 damage. We got a high caliber, we got a first class mastery, and we got a top gun, and um, we came number one by experience in our team. Also did considerably more damage than anybody else in the team. That T-150 did very, very well as well. Um, five kills, 1600 damage. Also a very good score from the Matilda. Um, three kills and 700 damage. Yes, you can get high caliber sometimes with Matilda, but it depends. You very hard to get a Matilda into position where it can consistently shoot at the enemy for the entire duration of the match. So that is it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video and found it interesting. If you did, please give it a like. If you've not already done so, please give the channel a subscription and I will catch you all again soon. Bye for now.